It's time for another pointless fuel test. This time we're going to be testing the ethanol content in petrol. In September 2021, a new standard for petrol was rolled out which saw an increase in the ethanol content across all standard 95 ROM petrols. Until this point, petrol had a 5% ethanol content and was labelled as E5 fuel. The new standards saw this rise to 10% ethanol and the labels now display E10 to reflect these changes. The ethanol they use is described as renewable ethanol, meaning it's manufactured from renewable sources. And the theory behind it is that the more ethanol you've got in your fuel, the more of a clean burn you get and the less CO2 emissions. It's estimated that this change of fuel recipe will lead to the equivalent of 350,000 cars being taken off the road. Sounds great, but it's not all good news. If you drive an older vehicle, defined as anything pre the year 2000, you might want to think twice before filling up with E10 fuel. The same applies for your lawnmower, chainsaw, boat or moped, but don't take my word for it, this is all explained on our government's very own website. Not only can it return a lower MPG count, it would seem that a higher ethanol content can corrode rubber hoses, seals, gaskets, metals, plastics, so everything then. It's not really an issue on modern vehicles, but your vintage Rolls Royce might not appreciate the increase in ethanol content. So what do you do? The official advice is to use whatever super unleaded fuel the filling station might happen to have because these remain an E5 fuel, and typically speaking these are going to have a higher ROM rating of 97 or 99, and I don't really think that's a bad thing. The only downside is it's a trifle more expensive than regular petrol. But what if E10 doesn't mean 10% ethanol? It's all in the wording, and it says that E10 fuel will contain up to 10% ethanol up to. So is it possible that there's less than 10% ethanol in standard 95 ROM fuel offering a cheaper alternative to running your classic Triumph? Maybe. We're going to find out. Let me explain the plan. I've got three cans of petrol collected from the main three UK retailers Shell, BP and Esso. It's their standard 95 ROM E10 fuel and we're going to measure the amount of ethanol content in each of them. How do we do this? Well there are a few methods available to us, but the most common is to take a small amount of water and mix it with the petrol. and measure your ethanol content. I'll try to briefly explain the science. The general rule is that a like-for-like -like substance will dissolve together. So for example, a polar liquid such as water will dissolve with another polar liquid such as ammonia. A non-polar liquid such as petrol won't dissolve in water, which is why when you mix the two, you always see a line of separation between the two liquids. This is all very complicated molecular chemistry, which I'm not gonna pretend like I understand. If you want to know more, I'd suggest do a search on polar liquids or non-polar liquids. All we need to know is that polar liquids aren't gonna mix with non-polar liquids. Just to f with us, ethanol is both a polar and non-polar substance, but because science, the attraction to polar liquids is stronger, meaning water has the ability to absorb ethanol even in the presence of petrol. You can see where this is all going, so if you've got petrol with ethanol dissolved in it already, we can add water and mix it up, and the water will extract or absorb the ethanol, allowing us to take a measurement. So what we'll do is take 100 milliliters of petrol, add 20 milliliters of distilled water, mix it up, allow it to settle, and we should see that the water sits on the bottom and the fuel on top due to the varying densities between the two liquids. If there's no ethanol present in the fuel, we should see the line of separation sit at the 20 milliliter mark because that's how much water we put in. If there was 10 milliliters of ethanol present, then the separation line would sit at 30 milliliters due to the water absorbing the ethanol. As we started with 100 milliliters of fuel, 10 milliliters tells us that we've got a 10% ethanol content. With all of our fuels being labeled as E10, we can expect to see a line of separation at 30 milliliters, but let's find out what we get. Results. Having let everything settle for a while, this is how the SO fuel looks. And what we're looking for is the line of separation between petrol and our now ethanol and water mix. And that line of separation in this case sits at 22 millilitres. What we're looking at here are the results for BP. And our line of separation is at 25 millilitres. And finally, the results for Shell. And this appears to have the most ethanol out of all of the fuels. The separation line is at 26 millilitres. Fascinating. Right, that's all three standard 95 Ron E10 fuels from the main suppliers SO, BP and Shell tested for their ethanol content. SO has the least amount of ethanol at 2%. BP and Shell have similar ethanol content, but it would appear Shell has ever so slightly more at 6% versus BP's 5%. Let's go set fire to stuff.
an interesting set of results. And I suppose it proves the point that an E10 label isn't an indication of the actual makeup of the fuel. It's all in the wording, up to 10%. But then what's the point of labeling it as E10 if nobody's gonna bother putting 10% ethanol in it? A good question, and it's not one that I can exactly answer. It appears to me that there's no enforced legislation that makes fuel companies put a predetermined amount of ethanol into their fuel. So they're not saying you have to have 10% ethanol in your fuel, but of course, if you don't have to have 10% ethanol in your fuel, as we've seen, some companies won't. Which kind of goes against the whole environmental argument that was made for introducing E10 fuel in the first place. Call me cynical if you will, but it seems the main reason to introduce E10 labels and fuel was to make somebody in a government office look like a hero that day. But that's just a theory. A fuel theory! Now that we've tested the fuels, do the results allow us to make an informed decision when it comes to purchasing 95 Ron fuel? After all, two out of three were 5% ethanol or less. Happy days, no problem. Unfortunately not. We need to consider that the recipe of fuel is variable and can change based on things like the time of year or your location, so it's possible that your local filling station will measure a different ethanol content at any given time. Ideally, the test would be repeated several times at several different sites, but I'll let you do that. If you're looking for a fuel that's got minimal ethanol content, you're probably best sticking with the super unleaded petrol. Or are you? If you'd like to see me test the ethanol content in the premium range of fuels, drop a comment below and let me know and I'll look into it. Maybe. If you guys like this video enough, I'll try to test a few different sites so we can see if there's any differences between them. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.